range today and you may hear some gunfire in the background, so bear with me. Okay, you may have seen our tiny handgun video, and you may have heard me say sometimes you need a really little gun, sometimes you do. At just about the bottom of a really little gun scale is the 25 ACP and the 22 long rifle. There's a lot of bicker and debate over which one of these is better in a pocket gun, and there's a lot of myths surrounding both of them. Hopefully today we can dispel a couple of those things. First of all, let me give you a close-up look at the two cartridges we're talking about. These are the two cartridges we're talking about. This is a 25 ACP on your left and a 22 long rifle on your right. Now, 25 is a bigger number than 22, and it's 25 caliber, and so it's a little bit bigger in diameter. That does not necessarily mean more powerful. There's two major differences between these two cartridges. One, the 22, as you can see, is rimmed, as where the 25 is semi-rimmed, making it a little bit better for use in an autoloader, especially the autoloaders that were around in 1905 when the thing was invented. The other major difference is, as you can see here, the 25 is center fire and the 22 long rifle is rim fire. Center fires can, generally speaking, be more reliable than rim fires. This is a Colt model 1908 in caliber 25 ACP. Now, if you've ever looked at ballistics charts, you know that a 22 long rifle is a lot more powerful than a 25. However, read the fine print on those ballistics charts. Most charts will tell you which guns they used to get the results. And the, the guns they used to test 25 are very typically pocket guns. That's what the caliber was made for. The gun they used to test 22 is typically a 16 inch plus barreled rifle. Well, obviously the results are going to be terribly askew. So what happens when you take the 22 and put it in a pocket gun like this Beretta Model 21A and compare pocket gun to pocket gun? Then how will the ballistics compare? Well, we've got our high-tech chronograph and our high-tech chronograph stand. Let's shoot these two guns and see what differences there really is. We have our chronograph about seven yards away, and I've got to shoot from the kneeling so I can have it go level through the chronograph, otherwise it'll screw up the results. So let's see how we do with the 25. First shot says 725. Second shot is 727, so that's pretty consistent. Third shot is 718. Fourth shot is 730. So that gives us a rough average of about 725 feet per second. Okay, now let's see how that compares to the 22. Now let's compare that to the 22. First shot is 860. That's a lot more. 840. 850. 850. So we're faster by about 125 feet per second. That's a lot more. However, the 25 was shooting a full metal case 50 grain bullet. This is shooting a hollow point 36 grain bullet. So that still isn't really a fair comparison. Let's change our 25 ammo and see if we get a different result. Now we've switched guns to a baby Browning, which is also a 25, and we've switched to Hornady Critical Defense Ammo, which is a 35 grain jacket and hollow point. Let me show you a close up of what that looks like. This is the Hornady Critical Defense um, 25 ACP with a 35 grain jacketed hollow point. And this isn't a copper wash or a brass wash like a 22, it's a real live copper jacket. Okay, so now what we've got is the 22 is shooting a 36 grain hollow point, the 25 shooting a 35 grain hollow point. That's about as close to as fair a comparison as you're going to get. So let's see how we do. Eight hundred and sixty-five. Eight hundred and sixty-six. Eight hundred and seventy-five. Eight hundred and fifty-five. So as you can see, when you actually make a fair comparison between a twenty-five and a twenty-two, the results are about as close as you could ever get. 
the difference between the two isn't even worth talking about. One of the common things you hear about shooting these really little guns is that they're not very accurate. Whether they're 22, 25, or any other caliber, people say they won't hold a very good group. Well, we're going to put that to the test. Now, we're going to shoot this Model 21A from 10 yards. The FBI tells us that 7 yards is the mean average distance for a lethal confrontation. So we'll shoot from 10 just to push that a little bit. Now, here's our Army Issue silhouette. Notice where I put this shoot and see. A very important thing about shooting little guns like this is making sure you shoot for the best part of the target to get the effect you want. We're here at 10 yards, and yes, if I got a really good stance and shot really slow, I could probably hold a really good group. But in real life, you'd probably have to shoot fairly fast. So let me shoot fairly quickly and see how good a group we can hold at this distance. Okay, that was six shots at 10 yards, fired fairly fast, and you can see that's pretty good hits. Definitely enough accuracy to get the job done. Really interesting thing, and I don't know if you can see it, see how this one bullet hole, that's one bullet hole, not two. It looks kind of elongated compared to the others. That's because that bullet is tumbling. That's one of the reasons it's so far off the center. Out of these little guns, you'll experience that occasionally. Now we're back with the baby brownie. And this gun, to shoot at this distance, can be very difficult. It has sights, but they're so tiny, they're really hard to see. Let me show you a close-up of it. As you can see, this gun is tiny. It does have sights, but they can be very difficult to use. Okay, so how'd we do? Not too bad. Now, I'm not saying that you should go sign up for the Olympics with a gun like this, but for practical purposes, that's plenty of accuracy. And the most important thing is make sure you're shooting at the correct portion of the target, if you know what I mean. But really, when you get down to it, are these little guns accurate? Yes, they are. And whether it's a 22 or a 25, the real difference is you and the model of the gun, not the caliber. Okay, so we've showed you that the 22 and the 25 pocket guns can be fairly accurate, but how powerful are those tiny calibers? Well, we've got one of my favorite targets, soda jugs, and let's shoot a couple of guns and compare the power of them. All right, we've got four jugs. We're shooting left to right with the 22, 25, 9mm, and 45. All of these loaded with high performance hollow points. The 22. The nine millimeter, and the forty five. Okay, so do the little guns compare to the big guns in terms of power? Of course not. But one thing you could see is that. In terms of the 22 versus the 25, there wasn't really very much difference. And it was a really cool visual effect. The main thing you got out of that was I got drenched in orange soda, and so did my gun. So I'm going to have to do some serious cleaning when I get home. But in terms of what you're really getting at here, is the 22 a better gun than the 25? Just shooting those soda bottles? I don't think there's enough difference to talk about. Here's another type of high performance 25 ammo, the Spear Gold Gun. It's also a 35 grain jacketed holophone. Let's shoot that out of our Colt Model 1908 and see how that goes. Plenty of accuracy, plenty of pop. So as long as you're a Pepsi assassin, you're doing just fine. So how does the 25 compare with the 22 in terms of penetration? Well, we'll do another really high-tech test. We'll shoot through this Pepsi can and see how far this hollow point 25 bullet will go through the soda jugs, and then we'll repeat that test with the 22 and see the results. Okay, so how'd we do? Well, 
through the Pepsi can, through the first jug, and through the second one. Now, on this one, it wasn't really fair because we were off to the side, so it didn't really penetrate the whole thing. But as you can see, even that hollow point with the 25 penetrated quite a bit. Now, let's compare that to a 22. Well, the 22 through the can went through the first bottle and went through the second bottle and made that cool geyser effect. But as you can see, even these small caliber hollow points will give you plenty of penetration. And once again, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference between the 22 and the 25. Okay, we shot some stuff and that was pretty fun. And hopefully we learned a little bit. Let me warn you right now, this is the boring part of the video where I talk. What we did was we shot the 22 versus the 25, and they came out pretty equally. A lot of people ask the question, why does a 25 even exist? That's a long story. Let me try to be as brief as I can. In the 1800s, a lot of people carried little guns. Most of the time, you carry those double-barreled derringers or really small revolvers in 22 caliber. Around the turn of the century, around 1900, when people started carrying auto loaders, they wanted really small auto loaders. Thus, in 1905, the 25 was invented. The whole point was to have a semi-rimmed cartridge so it lent itself better to autoloaders and the reliability of center fire. That's the whole point of the 25. And guns like this model, 1908 Colt, were very common up through 1950, 60, even into the 70s, 25 was very popular. One of the things that really killed the 25, there were actually two big things that killed the 25. First was the Gun Control Act of 1968. That passed a whole bunch of laws and restrictions on guns. One of those was it banned the import of guns under a certain size. So guns like this baby Browning made in Belgium couldn't be imported anymore. Another thing it did was it put some taxes and tariffs, and I can't quote it chapter and verse, and like I say, I'm trying to make this short, and made it to where reputable companies like Colt could no longer make little guns like 25s and get them to the market for a price people were willing to pay. Thus, making 25s became the bailiwick of companies like Raven Arms and Phoenix Arms, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but these are companies that make lower quality guns. And so the end result of that was a whole generation of people who look at the 25 and equate that with cheap crap. That's not the case, as you've seen today, if you have some old-school, high-quality guns. The other thing that was just the death knell for the 25 was right around, give or take, 1980, a whole new generation of 22 long rifle ammo, like the CCI Mini Mag, the CCI Stinger, and the Remington Yellow Jack, the list goes on ad nauseum, of really high-quality, powerful, reliable 22 long rifle ammunition and a whole new generation of really tiny 22 long rifle guns to shoot it, like this North American Arms Mini Revolver. Now, we didn't shoot this today because reality is it's not very accurate. It doesn't even begin to compare with this, with this Beretta. But as you can see, it's a whole lot smaller. Guns like this and a new generation of 22 ammo rendered the 25 completely obsolete. But as you can see, in terms of power, it stacks up against the 22 pretty equally. And right now, today, there are two great advantages to a 25 and two great advantages to a 22. The 22 has the advantage of the ammo is a lot cheaper. It's literally about one-tenth the cost of 25 ammo. 25 ammo, although small, is just as expensive, even more expensive, than the bigger center fire rounds. The other advantage is, now that 22 is a lot more popular, you can get a whole lot better variety of guns in 22 caliber. Yes, there are, they are still making 25s, but there aren't nearly as many of them. Now, the 25 has two really big advantages. One, it's a center fire. And even with the modern generation of 22 long rifle ammo, rim fire is not as reliable. And when you're already betting your life on a gun this small and this weak, you've got to take every advantage you can. The other advantage a 25 has is the availability of ammo. Even though it's more expensive, right now we're in some kind of 22 ammunition drought. Today is September 19th, 2014. Now things might change in a year or two, but as of right now, I can go to Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, Sportsman's Warehouse, 
just about any reputable gun store of any size, and I can buy 25 ammo. Buying 22 ammo is really hard to do. I know that sounds ridiculous, but if you've tried to buy it recently, you've seen what I mean. So right now, this minute, 25 ammo is a lot more available. And it's center fire. 22 ammo, when you can get it, is a lot cheaper and a lot greater variety of guns. So, bottom line to the whole thing is, you got to get the gun that fits your needs. And when you have the debate over, is a 22 better than a 25, in a pocket gun, there isn't a nickel's worth of difference when you actually start shooting. I hope that cleared up some of the myths and misunderstandings about 22 versus 25. So, as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the 22 versus 25 pocket gun shoot.